Okay. So, last class we talk about that cognitive domain and their sub domain sub categories like knowledge, comprehension, anal uh, application, analysis, synthesis and evaluation. So, and we discuss that there is a action verb associated with each domain, you do not have to remember the action verb, but you have an idea I have given, because uh, the software which I will present it to you, there all this work has been done, categorization of that uh, cognitive level of the action verb has been done, only we have to know how to write that uh, objective, okay. so that will come. So, next, uh, next domain is called psychomotor domain. Uh, cognitive domain mainly deals with the theoretical part of that uh, uh, teaching learning process that uh, classroom teaching mainly uh, deal with the cognitive domain, but uh, there is a uh, other two domains also psychomotor domains and effective domains. So, psychomotor domain actually dealing with the motor action. So, suppose I am doing a laboratory where I am just I am doing a titration experiment that not only the cognitive domain, but also I have to develop some psychomotor domain skill also. Like that latching a signal and measuring a uh, signal uh, uh, time or frequency in a oscilloscope and measuring a uh, length using a kaleidoscope, all kinds of things require some psychomotor skill also. So, psychomotor domain in Engineering education, it may be deal with some laboratory is required to deal with psychomotor domain also. So, that is why that if you see remember that NBA or Washington record said that experiment that investigation students should able to conduct investigation, design experiment, collect data, analyze data all kinds of things are required. So, psychomotor domain skill also has to be developed in this uh, in, uh, in laboratory also. So, uh, most of the cases if you see that we are doing a high voltage laboratory and student does not know how to connect a wire in a uh, in a socket. So, then uh, that kind of things is not uh, laboratory feelings will not come to the student. So, engineer required to work in field. So, that is why we have to develop the psychomotor domain. So, in psychomotor domain also there is a five categories if you see imitation, manipulation, precision, articulation and naturalization. So, lowest category is imitation, then manipulation, then precision, then articulation and naturalization. So, what is imitation? If you see, suppose somebody is demonstrate me how this is work, how a machine work. So, first demonstrate I want to see, now he told me that just operate this machine. So, I try to imit whatever is showing to me. So, that is called imitation like learning bicycling, while you are learning bicycling initially you try to imitate that how the person who is riding the cycle what is he is doing. So, that is called imitation, then is called manipulation, then whatever you see from the instructor you may not exactly follow the same things, but you, you know I have to do it. So, you try to, try to manipulate in the imitation process and try to achieve the goal. So, that is called manipulation, then there is a precision, once the manipulation where you have done the work, now you go for the precision that okay, I want to bring some precision in my work, so that error is minimized. Then articulation, so now in that level you are expert, so not highly expert, but your expertise is developed to do it your own way that is called articulation, you articulate that uh, whatever psychomotor domain is required to operate something. So, suppose I give, I give you an example that when we uh, do a titration experiment, so what, what students initially does, he try to uh, imitate whatever the teachers is doing, try to imitate that things and then try to manipulate, okay. so teacher drop small drop at the end point. So, he also try to manipulate, okay, I have to, I have to reduce the drop size and try to manipulate that point and then the precision is arise. So, once the manipulation by trial and error method here psychomotor is uh, developing, then the precision is come when the error is minimum. Then articulation, then he do its own way, not the teacher or instructor way or teacher way whatever teacher has done. So, that is called articulation, then the highest level which is called naturalization. That is that means, he becomes a expert, he does not require to 
think also to do the work like that when you are riding a bicycle once you learn that bicycle learning then your cognitive load is zero while you are bicycling that means it is natural phenomena. So, if you see that many operator many uh, you can see the cutter cutting a cloth or tailor is cutting the cloth and while, while he is talking to somebody else that he is so confident he is so naturalized he cannot make the mistake. So, that is why it is called naturalization. So, psychomotor domain imitation manipulation precision articulation and naturalization. So, whatever I said so that has been explained in these slides. So, I am not reading the slides again ok. Then call effective domain what is effective domain that is called feeling and attitude. So, in this domain also there is a five sub level one is called receiving responding valuing organizing and characterizing. So, receiving is the lower end and characterizing is the higher. So, what is receiving think about. So, effective domain means this is feeling or attitude. So, suppose I said ethics I have to develop the ethics. So, ethics is nothing but a attitude or feeling. So, I if I have to develop the ethics. So, initially there is a receiving what is what has what is falling within the ethics what is supposed to not do what is supposed to do. So, there is a thumb rule you cannot do this thing. So, this is a receiving information I am receiving then responding then what I am doing after I knowing this while I am practicing I am I am responding on it that I am not doing that things. So, that is responding then valuing somebody said me do not do this then I start thinking whether this is correct or not. So, I try to valuing that whatever is receiving I have instruction I have received and I have responded and then I try to think is it correct or is there is a something else. So, valuing then organizing then once I do it then I organize many facts to judge a specific valuing. So, I organizing the valuing to take a decision. So, that is organizing then characterizing then I yes I am convinced I am characterizing. So, ethics is within my character. So, ethics is practiced. So, whatever I do it is my character. So, ethics reflected from my character. So, if I say engineering ethics. So, engineering ethics so something some rules of material may be taught. So, those rules while I receiving those rules I receiving while I learning the domain knowledge I, I should not do this I should not do this I should not do this should not put like this way should not do like this way. So, all we are learning from the domain knowledge that we are receiving the ethics. Once I receive the ethics day to day I am responding whatever I received then after responding I start thinking based on my knowledge whatever I have developed that whether this is appropriate or not valuing. Then organizing I am organizing several facts to make a decision valuing organizing then characterizing then I have practiced it. So, I am doing the practice. So, attitude or feeling domain same things like that psychomotor domain have five category receiving responding valuing organizing and characterizing. So, characterizing is the highest level receiving is the lowest level ok. So, same thing whatever I explain with an example is given in the slides receiving is being aware of sensitive to existence of certain idea material phenomena and belong being willing to tolerate them. Responding is committed is some in some small measure to the idea material or phenomena involved by actively responding to them. Then 
I have a valuing, organizing and characterizing all definitions are there, you can go through the slides, you can read it. Okay? Thank you. Then come to the main part. So, in Bloom taxonomy, in summary, I can say there is a three domains of learning, one is cognitive domain, psychomotor domain, effective domain. Every domain has a five to six sub category. In case of cognitive domain, in our all classroom lectures or classroom teaching are mainly part of cognitive domain, but lab lectionary may include some psychomotor domain. So, we are basically dealing with the cognitive domain along with some sort of psychomotor domain. If it is engineering education, yes, psychomotor domain is important. Okay? And cognitive domain, we know there is a several level, one is called knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis and evolution. So, those are the lower to higher cognitive level. And as per the Bloom taxonomy, key idea is that if I perform in higher cognitive level, level, if I able to perform in higher cognitive level, it is assumed that I am able to perform all the lower cognitive level. So, if I able to solve, if I have a skill in application level, then it is said that the same area I able to comprehend and I able to define knowledge. If I have a skill in synthesis level, then I able to analyze it, I able to apply it, I able to comprehend it, I have a facts and figures also, I do not know. I should know that facts and figures. So, I cannot say that I do not know the facts and figure and I able to synthesize that thing, then it is not synthesis level. Okay? So, this is the key category. So, once I write down that cognitive level of that uh, uh, learning of uh, learning objective, then I can say if it is a synthesis domain, then I say okay, other domain others levels are already achieved by the learner. Now, what is use of this Bloom taxonomy? I know to write down the instructional objective according to appropriate cognitive level. So, Bloom taxonomy is used to write down instructional objective. So, if I say classroom teaching and I am teaching a course X, I am teaching a course A, then I should able to write down the instructional objective of course A. That means, the outcome of the course in term of instructional objective that at the end of the course students should able to perform a b c d skill or you can say the demonstrate the skill a b c d and those skill cognitive level should be in if it is b engineering i prefer that every course must be scattered to application, analysis, synthesis and evaluation level. But in class level, class objective may have knowledge, comprehension, application, all those things can be there in the class level. But if I have to write down only the course outcome, if it is I write down in knowledge and comprehension level, then it may not be mapped with that requirement of Washington records and NBA. So, B engineer is not only describe, they should able to design, solve, conceptualize engineering model, all kinds of things. Okay? Now, how to write down this outcome? That is called instructional objective. What is called? Instructional objective. So, what is an instructional objective? So, Bloom taxonomy I have covered. Now, I covered in the instructional objective. What is instructional objective? A instructional objective is a statement of something which is specific, measurable and achievable that students should able to do after receiving the instruction of it. So, if I say 
I'm opening a driving school for four months. Then if I want to write down what is my instructional objective or outcome of this four month training program in term of instructional objective that means at the end of this training program a students or a learner must be demonstrate something which is specific which is measurable which is achievable i cannot say students will appreciate the training program student will enjoy the training program because that is not outcome whether i enjoy or not doesn't matter but what i have i have to demonstrate as a learner i have to demonstrate something which is specific measurable and achievable within this four month so instructional objective when i write down is a some a statement which is specific measurable and achievable and that students should able to perform or do at the end of the instruction so if i say design an aeroplane is achievable within a course suppose or suppose i teaching a course on digital signal processing and i write down outcome design of filter although it is measurable but it is not specific it is not achievable because dsp digital signal processing is a course may be length for 40 lectures within that 40 lectures i cannot complete or students cannot develop the mastery or skill on any kinds of digital filtering so it is not specific it is not achievable so to make it specific and achievable how do i know that instructional objective is specific achievable and measurable so it is specific if the condition is given under which condition i have to perform and up to what level is measured the achievable so if i say any outcome must be there what is given to me what i have to perform and up to what level so what is given to me is the condition what i have to perform is the performance component up to what complexity is the criteria component so if i say i have to design a filter what kind of filter what is given to me to design the filter so if i can say design an fir filter using this method condition so design an fir filter so fir filter is condition using this method for a given specification all are condition up to this level criteria or i given exa another example so if i write solve student will able to solve differential equation student will able to solve differential equation this is my instructional objective yes it is instructional objective it is measurable solve is measurable but it is not specific and not achievable also if it is taught within a part of a course suppose this differential equation is taught in engineering mathematics so it is a part of that course so if it is part of the course i cannot taught all kinds of differential equation suppose i cover only first and second order differential equation and i write the outcome student will able to solve differential equation then what will happen if i give a third order differential equation they will say it is not taught in the class so instead of writing solve differential equation i will write solve differential equation up to second order using this method which is specific measurable and achievable so if i write down that instructional objective 
or you can say the every course outcome based on the instructional objective which is specific, measurable and achievable. What is, what is the advantage? Why I required to write down instructional all outcome in the way of instructional objective which is specific, measurable and achievable. Why I do so? Think about today's scenario. There is a syllabus. So, what is syllabus? Syllabus is nothing but a list of topic, topic A, topic B, topic C, topic D. Under this main topic, there is subtopic A dot 1, A dot 2, A dot 3, all kinds of topics are there. Now, what is topic the name? Topic only provide the name only one name. So, if I say same example, if I take DSP, an example is that it is written that filter design, frequency transform, digital circuits, uh, uh, digital system, digital signal, all topics are listed down. But it is not said filter design, what kinds of filter design up to what complexity? It said filter design may be FIR filter, IIR filter. So, if this DSP course is for 40 hours, simple FIR filter can be taught as a 40 hour course more than that. So, up to what level of FIR filter? Does it mention in the syllabus? So, what is the problem? Problem is that FIR filter is not mentioned. So, level is not mentioned. Suppose teacher A is taking this class, he is very good in filter design and he is very bad in let us does not that much of knowledge in frequency transform. So, what will happen? He will spend most of the time in filter design and spend less time in frequency transform because he know that I have to only cover the frequency transform. Depth is not defined. Student also does not know what is the what depth is required for a B engineer to know the DSP. So, requirement is not specified. So, that is perceived teacher to teacher, that is perceived institute to institute. So, I do not know what kind of skill I have acquired so that I can promote it to the next class. So, I do not know in analog electronics what kind of skill I should acquire to take the course on VLSI design. But instead of topic, if it is written down in ISD basis, instructional system design, the outcome or ultimate skill from the course is written down in specific measurable and achievable term. So, what kind of filter design you have a learner have to know is defined, whether it is taught by the teachers or not does not matter, learner know that I have to acquire this skill. Okay? So, this is the advantage. So, ISD provide specificity in the subject. So, it across the teacher does not matter learner know what he has to achieve. Once you define that what he has to achieve, then the evaluation become very easy. I can evaluate based on that target, whether you achieve the target or not. So, in the, from the student side, it provide clear understanding or clear indication or clear milestone or clear goal what a student has to be achieved at the end of the course. From the teacher side, it provides the clear thought or clear indication what I have to taught. So, it is define the teaching learning process, <coughs> specificity to the teaching learning process across the teacher does not matter, because it is already said I have to achieve this, student no, teacher no, 
every student must achieve this to achieve this what i have to do is done so teacher side there is advantage student side there is advantage now think about the employer side today employer came and computer science engineering student take the computer science he does not know what is their skill set because it is not mentioned in anywhere now suppose every course of computer science skill set are mentioned and it is available in the website so as a industry person i know which institute i should go to get this kind of skill people so it provide a employer the provide clear cut information to the employer what student able to do it think about the planning very much important most of the cases every subject written down some topic but one of the requirement if you see in the washington records and nba guideline is that modern tools uses that is not only the laboratory courses but also theoretical course must include in course outcome what kind of school tool set students should be proficient every suppose i am teaching a dsp course without giving any assignment on matlab am i teaching dsp course so once i define my outcome that students will able to design this kind of fir filter using matlab programming so course outcome include the resources which is required matlab while i teaching a vlsi course i may say student will able to simulate this circuit using this tool once i mention the tool then planning the or the institute know what kind of resources i have to buy or i have to take help from the industry unless what will happen every teacher will buy one software and that will be sit in that uh, laboratory nobody has open it nobody has done nothing because none of the outcome is written on that way so it provide a very good planning also so it is advantage on student side it is an advantage on teacher side it is advantage on planning it has an advantage on recruitment side it is an advantage on parents also parents also know what supposed to be a student my kids supposed to be skill will develop not they able to test it but they can know what kind of skill my kid has so whatever we write down that outcome we must follow the instructional system design which has has three component mainly this is a very important issue isd instructional system or instructional objective has a three component condition component criteria component and performance component a instructional objective must have a condition component must have a must have a performance component and it will be specific and measurable if it is contain the condition component and criteria component unless it will be open ended instructional objective okay now i am not explaining all the slide which i have written which is same whatever i have explained now i come to the example think about the first example i said an instructional objective has three component observable action that is performance component measurable criteria that is criteria component and condition of performance which is called condition component write a customer reply letter with no spelling mistake using a word processor forget about the by using a word processor so i have to write a customer reply letter that is my action that is my performance component what is the criteria no spelling mistake 
I should not have any spelling mistake. So, I have to develop a skill. The skill is I will be able to write a customer reply letter. What is the criteria? Without any spelling mistake. What is the condition? Using word processor. So, I do not have to write in pen and paper, I have to I can use the help of word processor. Copy a table from a spreadsheet into a word processor document within 3 minutes without referencing to the manual. So, here if you see the observable action means performance component, copy a table from a spreadsheet into a word processor document. What is criteria? Within 3 minutes. What is condition? What is the condition is given? Without referring the manual, I have said you should not refer to the manual to do it. So, that is you can say the instructional objective can be a, a, so there is a instructional objective if it is given, I can find out which is the performance component, which is the condition component, which is the criteria component. Or other way, when I writing an instructional objective, I should think it should be specific, it should be measurable, it should be achievable. Sometime you found that criteria is missing, but condition is missing is very rare cases, except define Newton second law of motion is also an ISD instructional objective which is low level, but define Newton second law of motion does not require any criteria, does not require any condition, it is only a performance component. But when I go to the upper level, condition component is important. Okay? So, that condition component is required. So, this is the main skill which I am looking for from you is that you should able to write down your course outcome using instructional system design and you should able to find out the condition component and criteria component and performance component for a given objective. Okay? Thank you.